Welcome back YouTube for another exciting review of a competition firearm. This is the Humble Marksman channel. If you enjoy shooting competitions and enjoy product reviews, all that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. So let's jump right in. What is this I have on the table? This is a Glock 22 Gen 4 that has been modified extensively. Just about everything that can be done to it has been done to this gun and it is fantastic. My buddy Dave lent me this gun. He uses it to compete in USPSA Limited Division, which pretty much allows anything to happen to the gun other than optical sights. And this is really fantastic. So let's kind of run through what you're not used to seeing. The base model, as I mentioned, is a Glock 22 Gen 4. So what's all the bits that don't come on them? Well, let's start on the most obvious. You might notice that the kind of two-tone slide going on, that's because the barrel is a six-inch threaded barrel that has been uh, that has been threaded and has received a sight block from Taylor Freelance. You can see that there. That what that does is it makes this gun a sight tracker. You probably noticed in the intro of the video the rapid fire shots. The front sight doesn't really budge. You can actually witness the front sight through the whole recoil arc the whole time. It's it's really not hard to track. So that's why they call it a sight tracker. This is a feature that comes on all of the high-end limited guns that are made by the STI, SVI, and all the other 2011 builders. So that is a nice, nice feature to have. I really enjoy that. So the next bit, starting at the muzzle of the gun working backwards, is the SJC frame weight. You see that there, but it is also fitted with a thumb assist, which required the frame to be drilled and tapped to accept this screw and lock it in. So that is a one-way trip modification as long as you don't mind having that hole in the frame of your pistol. So what that does is it allows you to grip the pistol using an opposable grip. So how that's different from a typical thumbs forward grip is when I do this, I'm pressing down with my thumb as hard as I can and forward as well. So you're kind of pushing against the way the muzzle is trying to rise. It creates a memory pad so that when you build your grip on the pistol, it's going to be in the same spot every single time and it also combats muzzle rise, which is very nice, very useful in competitive shooting as you can imagine. Coming down to the rear of the gun, the sights that you see outfitted there are uh, Dawson competition sights that are fully adjustable. Right now they're zeroed for a 165 projectile. If you wanted to go up to 180 or 200, he has the ability to just adjust elevation using his rear sight. And then at the back of the gun, we have the Dawson Ice Brass Magwell. This is a very nice magwell that uh, really speeds up the reloads and gives you a lot of real estate to kind of force these tapered magazines in there. So that's fantastic. It's brass, so it it's very heavy and it counteracts the weight from the frame weight. So the gun actually balances very similar, although it handles very differently from a Glock. So let's get into the frame and what he's done with that. You might notice the frame has been stippled with a very nice border pattern. This is done by the Smiths at Georgia Firing Line, which is one of my sponsors. You should check them out. But GA Firing Line does amazing Glock work, and this is just one example of that. The texture is very, very aggressive. It's more aggressive than a Gen 3 or even a Gen 4, uh, even a Gen 3 RTF. It feels fantastic in the hand. It goes nowhere. It totally locks in. It's fantastic. The other thing that they do at Firing Line, which I'm a huge fan of, is they can relieve the trigger guard. Uh, Dave really likes the double undercut, which you can see there, but the way that they relieve this trigger guard, it looks so professional, it feels so good, and it completely eliminates Glock knuckle, which is an issue I used to have when I was competing with Glocks. So that I, I would do that on every single gun if I was shooting a limited division or even for a carry gun, uh, if I was carrying Glocks. So that, that's a fantastic feature. It allows you to get a little bit higher and a little bit closer to the bore. So it lowers the bore axis a little, little bit as well, getting you more meat higher up on the frame, which is a good thing. Uh, up on the slide, you might notice that the fronts of the slide has been milled out. They, the, they did this in-house at Georgia Firing Line, and then they knocked off the corners of the slide that's called a tri-top it's very popular cut in 1911s and 2011s and it lightens the slide it reduces the mass that travels backwards and hits your hand in the recoil cycle so that there's not as much muzzle climb that's at least the working theory and it speeds up the slide cycling time which is a good thing uh, 
and it lightens up the recoil impulse, which are two things that are prized by competition shooters. Then Dave, once he got his slide work done, he got the slide Cerakoted, I believe this is a burnt bronze, he got the magwell done to match, and he's off to the races with his 210 race clock. Or I guess it's tri-10 with the stainless as well, but uh, it's just really a fantastic gun. How does it shoot? Well, you saw the rapid fire and the intro, but uh, here is some more footage shooting the distance change-up drill. That's two shots to the lower A zone on one USPSA metric target, two shots to the upper, and two shots to the lower on a third. Uh, I just ran this drill three times and had really no issues. It was very comfortable. Uh, you could really jump on the gas once the sights were on target, and it was very easy to keep them on target. The grouping was fine, and when you slowed down and went ahead, it was, it was easy to pick up the head box as well. I think about half of them or so were alphas, which is good. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice little package there. That was, drill is supposed to be done at 10 yards. I'm using a third scale target that I made to run it at 10 feet, which is more appropriate because I can't spread out targets like I need to at 10 yards when I practice at the indoor range. So uh, shot groups with it, I was able to hold about a three inch group. Uh, and that's pretty good for me, that's, that's not bad. The best I can do at 15 yards offhand freestyle with my shadow, uh, active shadow to date has been about two and a quarter inches, so it's kind of right there in the ballpark. One group was about three inches, and the other one was under just under three and a half inches, which is very, which is good for 15 yards. It's good for me. It's about as good as I can do. So, uh, the gun's fantastic, man. I am, I am by no stretch of the word fan, a fan of Glock pistols, but I really, really like this pistol. For you guys who are Glock guys and want to step up your game, building out that custom Glock. I mean, this this is the top end, man. You can't you can't really do much better. In fact, I would I've, I've handled Zevs and I've handled I don't think I've ever handled a Salient. I think I have handled an Agency. I don't think any of them do anything other than pretty slide work. That this gun doesn't do better. The trigger uh, we haven't really discussed the trigger much, but my buddy's an engineer, as I mentioned. But there it is. That's the trigger. That's all the trigger movement. Here, let me show you again because that's all you really get. So there is zero slack in the trigger. I'm told that the safeties are still functional. I imagine two, at least two of the safeties probably still work. I'm not sure about all three. But there's zero pre-travel. There's only a little bit of spongy creep, typical of Glock's triggers, in there. And then it breaks and there is next to no over-travel. Just as much as is needed to release the striker and no more. My buddy Dave really geeked out on this and hats off to him. He got a trigger shoe at the back, I guess that's what you call it, the trigger housing and whatever you call that, the piece that sits inside the frame right there. And it fitted with a over travel stop and then he bought a bunch of connectors and picked out the one that had the geometry that he liked the best that broke exactly where he wanted it to break that made sense for him. So it really is a tuned trigger that is set up for him and how he likes to address the trigger. And the end result is pretty amazing. It probably is about a four pound break. It's not ultra light, but it is super reliable. So he really did a great job tuning that up. It's it's hands down one of the nicest clock triggers I've ever experienced. And I've handled, I, I've owned probably four and I've shot other people's before. So even though I shoot CZs now, there was a time where I owned several Glock pistols and <laughs> this is hands down my favorite. So there it is guys, that is the Glock Franken Glock, whatever you want to call it. It is a sight tracker. It has all of the features of a super high-end 1911, perhaps maybe, or 2011, excuse me, except for maybe the looks. It still kind of looks kind of wild, but because it is so functional and so unique, I actually, I think it looks cool. And this thing turns a lot of heads it matches. A lot, everyone who sees this and knows at all what they're looking at immediately asks him to go to the safe area so they can look at it, and everyone loves it. He's been having a great time with it, and uh, I enjoy shooting it. It's fantastic. So if you are building up a 40 and want to get into USPSA Limited Division, this would be the route I would recommend over trying to source a Glock 24 or build up a 35. Uh, we squatted with a guy this past weekend who had a Glock 35 with the frame weight, and he was very envious of this, as he should be. The extra sight radius that this barrel gives you is absurd. It's so easy to get the sights lined up on a target to get an acceptable hit. It's just, it's unfair. Um, I don't think it'd be legal for IPSC, and that's just fine because we don't play that here in the States. 
One thing I didn't touch on is he's running the Dawson Precision base plates. Uh, these allow him to get 19 plus one rounds in the mag tubes, which is the OEM Glock mag tubes. And I'm told that with time, this will accept the 20th round. I think he can force the 20th round in right now, but it's not reloadable. So he doesn't bother because all that's gonna do is cause malfunctions. So anyway, if you like videos like this, please subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks again.